Return from something else, so I'm trying to get settled after the long walk. And my name is David McCain, and this is Eating with Compassion. And what I do, I practice a communication model called Compassionate Communication, and I find that it's very helpful. It provides a format to help us really live our values, really be able to make decisions about whatever it is we're deciding on that really honor our values and allow us to also connect with these values for future generations, uh, for all life, and because eating is something we do so frequently. Hi! Maybe we could s scoot you in our little circle if you guys could just scoot around a little. Uh-oh. I was just kind of giving my introduction, and I practice a communication model called uh, compassionate or nonviolent communication. And I find it a very effective tool to help us make decisions that really honor all of life and help us shift from kind of what we learned growing up that we can't help everyone, we can't honor all life with our decisions. So we have a system where the people on the top, and this is reflected in whatever structure you want to look at our food structure, political structure, people on top are typically getting their needs met, they're getting what they want, and then all of us underneath aren't getting what we need. So this is a model to really enable us to communicate in ways that allow all of our needs to get met. And because we make so many food choices, and food choices have so much power to create both within us and without the kind of world that we want, I thought it would be fun to apply these principles to eating. So what I'd like to do now is uh, allow each of you <coughs> a chance to share your name and maybe a minute or two on what brought you to <coughs> either this particular training or the, the uh, conference in general and anything else you'd like to share. But I'd invite, we have about five folks, so if we took 10 minutes doing that, that'd be about two minutes per person. So would you be willing to start? Uh, sure. Hi, my name's Lindy. I came to the conference last year. Um, I'm involved in Slow Foods, Urban San Diego. Uh, this year I'm going to be on the chair of food justice and issues of um, social justice and environmental sustainability are really important to me. Great. Glad you're here. My name is Chad Bliss. Um, I actually just moved here recently the past couple of weeks from Chicago. Um, but there I was actually the founder, executive director of a nonprofit, so we focused on transforming vacant lots into food systems. So in doing, in, so we also, we did workforce development, so we hired people with multiple barriers, uh, did job training, job placement, stuff like that. But one thing that I found was, when, especially working with the young adults, was that there obviously there was a difference in the choice where they chose, you know, healthy food or Doritos or something. You know, one's more life-affirming, and the other is unconsciously more destructive. And so they may not be labeling, I'm destroying or committing suicide slowly, but there is something on an unconscious level with that. And so so I'm fascinated. So I, so I even started to transform thoughts and beliefs mm -hmm. and how we look at food and how we think about food and interact with each other. And so that was a platform. I never put it, like, concretely, like, food and compassion communication. Because I've done nonviolent communication oh, yeah. as well. Oh, yeah. Great, great. Trying to... Working with you know ex offenders and stuff like that. Yeah. So, and but I never put the two together. So I'm just interested in to maybe seeing a model putting the two together because I actually just got hired here with Second Chance, who they do yeah. workforce development. Right, right. And they're starting an urban farm initiative. Oh so wow. So they had hired me to start that up. Cool. So that's why. Mm hmm <laughs> Super. So uh, being such not from here, anybody else, I do want to get. I have a lot of skills and I think knowledge to contribute, so you can, I'd like to get plugged in somehow. Super. Yeah. So. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. That's it. <laughs> There's a lot of vacant lots here, too, that we need some help with. Yeah, definitely. My name is Emily Hicks. I go to church here, but it's completely accidental that this place was opened up for today. But I came to this church not because I'm a Christian, but because I'm an activist and I got in trouble. And I needed a safe place to go and a community to support me after I got interrogated. And I came because I know Brad and I gave a talk this morning on borders, food distribution, fast food, slow food, and food sold from the back of a car. 
and, and I'm uh, and I'm interested in healing. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Hey, my, uh, my name is Min Fei. Uh, so my my husband's a big believer in uh, local food, eating organically, and uh, he's a volunteer of uh, a lot of urban farm and um, yeah. So I've kind of exposed to this environment because of him and. He came to uh, this conference in the past couple of years, and this year I feel like I, because of him, I kind of like start thinking a little bit. Cho- like um, when I choose food, I do kind of eat food. I kind of like make the choice more consciously. Uh, so I so look at the the workshop schedule, and there's a few interesting talks. So I'm here. Great. Uh, my name is Kara Velez, and uh, I found out about this conference through, I meditate at the World Beat Center. It's like in the tradition of Thich Nhat Hanh. And so somebody there had mentioned this conference, so that's why I came here, and uh, I like the idea of compassion and eating, obviously partially because of that, but also um, I've recently became vegetarian, and so I don't know, it's just an interesting topic. Mm-hmm. Struggles I'm going through, and hi. It's kind of cool to be here amongst all of you because I'm actually starting one of my. I'm I'm involved in a. My friend is starting a nonprofit, and so I don't know. It's just cool to be in this place with so many people doing great things. So cool. Yeah. So we were just doing some introductions. Mm-hmm. So would you be willing to share, share your name and why you're here at the oh, conference yeah, or here sure. specifically? Okay, hello everyone. My name is Tiffany. I'm a student at UCSD. Um, I coordinate with one of the student organizations called Alternative Breaks, where we uh, spend our spring break volunteering like in a community in need, like abroad or nationally. And um, every quarter we have a retreat, like a training retreat, where we do like a service project in the community and do like education. So all of like maybe 50 of our members are here at the Just- Food Justice Conference tomorrow we're going to volunteer at a farm. So today we're just here to get some education about the food justice movement. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. Great. Well, I'm going to close this door. So we're not disturbed. Yeah. Another thing that I was thinking about is just because I'm going raw, you know, yeah. so I completely feel different. Like, I feel more alive when I eat raw than I eat something else. And I was thinking that, like, I think our whole reference point of what healthy means like, we have no reference point. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like if you never learn to love yourself or you're beaten, you don't really have a reference point. So it's really creating new reference points in order to understand that. And so it's like I'm, I'm really interested in figuring out how do we develop these new reference points of health within people so they can actually connect with themselves and feel the vitality of life and what it really means. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, that's really kind of what my whole life... Yeah. Like, that's my life goal. Wow, <laughs> wow. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Huh. Hello. Hello. I wonder if, yeah, I wonder if we just scoot the folks back. Possibly there. Try to get kind of a, an arc or a really little bit of a horseshoe. Interesting introduction, so I'm wondering if you'd be willing to say your name and what brings you to the conference or to this particular presentation. Uh, my name is Miriam, and my friend brought me. <laughs> Hi, and I'm Talia, and I came to the event because I have friends who are part of the food justice, like organizing it, and I'm just, I came to this one specifically because I've been trying to eat, make better choices about what I'm eating and be more conscious of that. Okay. Super. Well, I'm so glad that you're all here. I'm excited <laughs> to share this model. I share a model called Compassionate Communication that I've found is the really best way to help me be conscious of my decisions, whether about food or anything else. And I just have a fun time sharing it, so it's fun to kind of mix it with eating. So I'm going to pass out a little handout. I think there's enough for everyone. Just grab one of those, if you would. So what I'm wanting to do today is to introduce this chart that I'm calling the Eating with Compassion chart, and it's going to be a way to apply 
compassionate communication to food decisions that you might not be perfectly satisfied with. And I'm hoping that no one is 100% satisfied with every food choice. Or this will be a short, okay, no, okay, good, good. And I know because you're here, you're probably making pretty good food choices. It sounds like you're making shifts in your lifestyle that are allowing you to um, be in the world in ways that you enjoy a little bit more. And I really want to emphasize, uh, actually, I was going to lug my guitar, but I had my hands all full, but I was going to play a song really about the importance of really making decisions that honor all of life. And as we are learning more about the impacts that we've had on the environment and that we're living in, in sustainably in a lot of ways, it's really incumbent on each of us to become conscious, to really become awake and to be making choices as best we can that honor all of life, that honor the challenge of honoring future generations with our choices. There aren't a lot of models for that. And uh, nonviolent communication, as I'll present, I think is one way to be able to do that. And now I would like to invite you to do a little exercise and turn to a person next to you, ideally not the person that brought you. Um, so if you could, maybe you could come and talk with Kara. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you could talk with Kara. And we're just going to do this pretty quickly. We don't have a whole lot of time. So what I'm wanting you to do, we're going to take two minutes, and I want, I want you to, to collectively find a food choice that you made that you feel unsatisfied with. It could be something you made in the past. It could be the uh, donuts you had walking up from, from the parking lot. They smell so good. But just something that you have a little, a little bit of regret around, and we'll be able to play with that using the chart. So you have two minutes, and you need a spokesperson.